everyone, and welcome to our latest online event here at the University of California Merced. Welcome to this great online event that is part of a larger series called Discover UC Merced. It is a virtual series. Tonight, we will be spotlighting the School of Natural Sciences. So thank you once again for joining us. Before we get started, let me give you a couple of quick tips. If you would like to adjust your audio settings, you can do that in the lower left corner of your screen. Click on the audio settings button and make those adjustments as needed. If you would like to adjust the size of your window, click on view options in the upper portion of your screen and make those adjustments there. Lastly, and most importantly, we do have the opportunity this evening for you to use the Q&A button at the lower portion of your screen. You can submit your questions throughout the presentation. We do have staff behind the scenes who are ready to take advantage of answering those for you, as well as a live question and answer session at the end of this great event tonight. Once again, my name is Ricky Hill. I am an e-recruiter here at UC Merced. And as I mentioned, tonight's spotlight on the School of Natural Sciences is part of a larger series called Discover UC Merced. We will provide you with a link to that website so you can check out what other upcoming events we have occurring and scheduled through the month of November. Thank you once again for joining us at this time. It is my great honor and pleasure to hand things over to Dean Dumont. Thank you for being here to talk with us tonight. We've got a great lineup of folks in natural sciences to talk with you. Um, one of the things I'm curious about is uh, thinking about how many of you think you might have a major all figured out. I imagine that's what you're thinking about these days. Um, if you have a major, you can put it in the chat. Um, and I'm wondering also how many of you have decided what university you're going to go to, right? Um, that's another thing to think about. Well, um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the School of Natural Sciences here at UC Merced. My name is Betsy Dumont and I'm the Dean. Um, I want to really talk about a couple of things that are really special about our campus that you won't really find anything anywhere else. Um, one of those is the research that we do. Um, oh yeah, hey look, I'm seeing some biology and neuroscience, cool. Um, another is the majors that we have that, um, and what you can do with them uh, when you graduate. Um, and the third thing is, is about all of the ways that we support our students to make sure that you are successful um, as you go through your program. If I can have the next one. So these are the kinds of things that, why do you go to a research university? So if, I don't know if you've thought about this yet, but uh, the University of California uh, has, is a research university. And what is sort of special and the advantage of going to a research university? Well, the advantage is that you get to work with people who are doing the research and discovering all kinds of amazing things. Um, for example, faculty in our campus are looking at new ways to look at, uh, look at proteins, uh, look at viruses, and use mathematics to figure out new drugs for COVID. We've got uh, applied mathematicians who are here thinking about ways that uh, we can mathematically improve images of the universe, like this beautiful universe in the center. And we've also got people who are asking questions about um, climate change and what's happening with the earth. What's happening with the earth? What does wildfire do? How does it affect our future? People are working on these really cutting edge issues right here on campus. Next one, please. And the, what that means to you is that you get to actually participate in doing the research. Um, so not just sitting in classes and not just uh, taking exams, right? but actually getting involved in faculty members' labs doing research. You can do that through the departments and working with faculty directly. We've also got a number of institutes and centers that are on campus that support undergraduate research. Um, many of our classes are designed around research projects. So there's really no way that you can come to UC Merced as a natural sciences uh, student and not be able to do these fabulous things that uh, we all do in our labs. I can have the next one, please. All right, so one of the things to think about um, when you're coming to a new, new university is uh, what do you want to do in your major? So our faculty here are committed to educating and training you as the next generation of scientists and leaders. Um, and our graduate skill, our graduates have both practical skills um, and, and some other kinds of skills to work with fundamental science and everything from that to sort of high tech companies. We offer bachelors of science degrees in five different disciplines. Um, so you see on the screen, uh, applied mathematics, biological sciences, uh, chemistry, environmental system science, and physics. Um, and within all of these, uh, with one exception, the environmental system sciences, you, you 
select an emphasis track. And we've got some great people here who are going to tell you about some of the things in their majors. Um, we've also got applied math. We've also got minors in several of these majors so that even if you're in a different major, you can pick up some of that information that you might want to have. So I'm the next one, please. Okay, I want to tell you a little bit about um, applied mathematics. So you might have heard of a math department, but this is an applied mathematics department, which is really neat because what they do is they work on solving real world problems. Um, so they might collaborate with biologists, they might collaborate with astronomers, they might collaborate with computer scientists to answer all kinds of really interesting questions by using mathematics to solve those things. Um, one of the things that they um, they work, they have seven different, they have a bunch of different emphasis areas. So everything from computer science and data science to physics. And what that means is that there are faculty in the department who work in all of these areas. And so any of these areas that would be of interest to you, um, you can do that by working with faculty. Um, and there are also courses in each of these areas and they can, you will come out at the end trained to do many different kinds of jobs, which you'll hear about in a little bit. Come on, next one. Another really neat department is environmental system science. So what's neat about this department in particular is that they, faculty there do everything from geology, um, sort of on the rocks and the uh, end of things, all the way to looking at ecosystems, right? And so how all those things are connected to one another. There are many different collaborations within the department among faculty and with those faculty and other faculty on campus and other institutions. And it's a real holistic picture of what's going on in the ecosystems um, of the planet and how those change over time. I want to now um, hand this over to Dr. Pribram Jones from chemistry um, to tell you a little bit about her, uh, her the work that uh, you do in chemistry. Thank you. Thanks, Dean Dumont. Um, so next slide, I have a slide here, I think about um, chemistry. And I know that a lot of you are in this, this moment of trying to figure out your major. Um, and so I thought I would tell you that there are a lot of reasons that you should be a chemistry major. And it might not just be this first one that you already know that you love chemistry. That is a great thing. And um, we want chemistry to love you back, right? We're re chemistry is ready um, to envelop you into this chemical world that we live in, we all live in. Um, but there are lots of other reasons that you might want to have a chemistry major um, because chemistry is the central science. So getting training at the undergraduate level in chemistry is a great way to prepare yourself for majors um, at, in graduate school, a lot of other different kinds of fields, or uh, specifically at the intersection between chemistry and some of those things like physics, the other majors that you'll hear about here today, physics and biology, you've heard about environmental system science and math, chemistry connects to all of those things as well. Um, but also you hit things like astrochemistry, medicine, biology, veterinary science. Um, so all of these scientific um, fields rely on chemistry and chemical thinking for some part of what they do. So getting trained up in these kinds of skills are great for preparing you that way. Um, the other reason that a lot of people do chemistry is because you get real world skills. And if, if you're coming to college to get um, prepared for um, a job, a career, um, chemistry is a great way to do that. Lots of people gain bachelor's level skills in chemistry and can move on um, to having a career um, straight out of college. Um, but a lot of us, I was definitely um, somebody that had a lot of questions about what I wanted to do when I started uh, my college career. And chemistry was a great way for me to get a variety of skills, be, particularly because of being connected to all of these different, um, all of these different fields and majors. So in our in our department, we have um, a chemistry emphasis, which is sort of being a generalist, which is a great way to have a balanced education in chemistry. You can also be um, have a materials chemistry emphasis or a biological chemistry emphasis. But the main point that I wanted to make with all of these arrows and things like this and this wonderful um, interdisciplinary chemistry cat um, is that there are many, many ways to be a chemist. You can be a computer, uh, a, a computer-based chemist, a computational chemist, theoretical chemist, pharmaceutical chemist, um, an ecologist who does chemistry. Um, but the other way that there are many ways to be a chemist is that we have a need for all kinds of thinkers, doers, makers, analysts, and creators in chemistry. So whoever you are, there is a kind of chemistry that you could contribute to. So UC Merced's a great place to explore this because our, our undergraduates are in the labs with us every day doing all this different kind of chemistry. 
um, to talk more about the uh, physics side of things in our in our school of natural sciences, I'm going to hand it over to um, Professor Brian Utter. Great, thank you. Yes, I'm Brian Utter. I'm a teaching professor in the Department of Physics, and uh, just want to highlight some of the things about our program at UC Merced. Um, if you've taken a physics class, then you probably know about the first one, which is that our goal as physicists is to find the fundamental principles um, governing systems. So trying to find the simplest model that accurately predicts or describes what we're trying to understand. So that goes from describing atomic processes, nuclear processes, up to galactic structures um, and everything in between. Uh, so within physics, there's a bunch of tracks in addition to a physics uh, BS, there are emphasis tracks in astrophysics, atomic molecular optical and condensed matter physics, biophysics, computational and mathematical physics, as well as some custom emphases. And some of those words you might not know, um, which, is, which is fine. Um, all of them are unified by this idea of searching for these fundamental scientific principles, um, finding basic models, and exploring them as far as we can go. Some of the distinctive things I think about our program, one is the size. Um, the physics major is, is not a huge major. We have a pretty good number of research active faculty. And uh, the number of students is such that uh, all of our undergraduates work with faculty in their research labs. So in fact, not just that it's an option, but it's, it's actually a requirement. You have to do research uh, with faculty, complete a senior thesis. And while I say requirement, it's really a, a great opportunity to get involved and to explore things that might interest you, things that might propel you into graduate school or into a career uh, in, in, in one of these fields. Along those lines, um, I think, I, 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 personally, I, I took physics and I, I found it really fascinating. I like the idea of trying to figure things out as a high school senior. That's what got, got me into it. I started taking classes and then ended up changing my major uh, into physics. Um, but I, I didn't actually know anybody who was a physicist. And I think that's true of, of most uh, students. You, you might know of a physics teacher, right? Uh, but not necessarily somebody who's a professional physicist. It turns out, uh, even though there certainly are professional physicists, if you look at job titles, the American Institute of Physics each year surveys students a year after they graduate with their bachelor's degree, and they publish the top 30 job titles. And it turns out most of them are things that sound like engineering or software uh, engineering, things like that. And the point is that physicists develop a problem solving ethos, a way of, of attacking problems that are complex, that maybe have limited inf information. And if you, if you have taken physics, you might've run into some of these as homework problems even, right? But they get deeper and deeper. Um, but the idea is that we have uh, students who really engage in that problem solving and are really valued when they uh, seek a career or go on to graduate school, whether it's in physics or a closely related science or engineering field. Um, the last thing I wanna mention is that Again, as a somewhat smaller department in terms of number of, of majors, um, we have a, a really nice sense of community. So there's an act, active society of physics students. There's an active women in physics um, group, as well as just as of a couple of weeks ago, there's an astronomy club. So these, these groups bring students together for social and intellectual purposes and really um, provide a nice environment for uh, for our majors within the, within the department. So there's a lot of interaction between students and faculty and also within the major themselves. And with that, I'll uh, leave it there and uh, hand it over to Professor Gordon Bennett, who will tell us about some of the op opportunities in biological sciences. Hello, um, my name is um, Gordon Bennett, Dr. Gordon Bennett, and um, I'm a research faculty here and an educator, and I'm also the chair of the biological sciences. So I've come to know it quite well. Um, and I don't know if biology needs a huge introduction. I also view it as one of the foundational sciences and it's the pathway to a lot of different careers that include things like medicine, teaching, um, pretty much anything you can imagine. And I think one of the things we really pride ourselves on for our biological science program is that it's really an interdisciplinary training, not just for biology itself, but also for STEM careers. A lot of our students are exposed to um, math, chemistry, physics, all these really wonderful opportunities we have on campus. Um, so if you enter into the biological sciences, 
you leave here with a pretty well-developed understanding of all these other fields of science, um, which I think is really wonderful. Our program is organized into a number of different tracks, um, which includes human biology, which is a track that a lot of our students take who are interested in medicine, um, nursing, and other outcomes that are related to human science. We also have developmental biology, where students learn about sort of different range of organisms and how they develop. And this is also a really good training area for medicine and other types of career outcomes. We have a molecular and cell track where students are exposed to classes like um, cellular biology, uh, microbiology, and other types of things. Um, and it's related to our microbiology and immunology track. And students in these classes tend to get a lot of really awesome lab experience and wet lab uh, and molecular um, aspects of research. And then finally, we have an ecology and evolutionary biology track. And this is probably, um, I have to say where my heart is, although I love the entire entirety of our program, ecology and evolution is, speaks to me because I, I'm an evolutionary biologist. Um, and in this track, students get a lot of hands-on experience with actual field and uh, other types of research experiences. Some of the classes we have in there are basic evolution, um, marine biology, and ecology, uh, and pretty much anything you can imagine in that realm. And I just wanted to sort of reiterate some of the things that our program prepares people for. Um, it's, a, it's a Bachelor of Science, but it gives you a great foundation in things like teaching, any kind of allied medicine, medicine. A lot of our students come in as pre-med uh, pre majors, uh, prepare students for biotechnology, including hot topics like uh, um, bioinformatics and analysis of really large data sets and genomics and all these other kinds of really amazing things that are going on right now, like customized medicine. Uh, and then a lot of our students are engaged directly in research across all these different fields in these tracks that I just showed you. Um, and I think this really speaks to one of the strengths of our program. We are the largest program in the School of Natural Sciences. However, I have met some of the most outstanding and dedicated professors as, that are teachers in our program that I've known anywhere. Um, and it's really inspiring to me the amount of care and effort and involvement that faculty have directly in uh, undergraduate education and the outcomes and also the experiences. Everyone works really hard to make sure our program uh, has uh, the best opportunities and the best outcomes for our students and they get um, their hands involved directly in the student experience. Uh, and it's a really inspiring group of folks. Um, and that's the basic gist of our program. Uh, I just want to sort of reiterate a little bit of my own personal experience with biology. I joined biology as a pre-med and it was also a very large program and I felt a little bit lost and I dropped out of pre-med and then I went into pre-vet uh, pre, uh, and then I went into um, pharmacy and I was exploring all these opportunities. And I was moving through tracks very similar to this until I found my home in um, education and then eventually research. Um, and I think, you know, it's great to explore these sort of fundamental areas as you get started in biology, as you figure out the pathway that's best for you through sampling some of our, our basic curriculum. Um, and with that, I will pass it on to Erica. And if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the q and I'm happy to answer anything um, you might be considering or thinking about for biological sciences here at UC Merced. Thank you, Professor Bennett. So to reiterate, um, the esteemed faculty have already shared a variety of career opportunities, but here's some additional opportunities that you might consider. Uh, really, um, any of the majors in the School of Natural Sciences is gonna prepare you for a wide array of careers. Um, healthcare is a top area of interest for our students, but that's not the only thing you can do. Um, data science, lab tech, uh, going into uh, law, banking and finance, teaching in at all levels, um, a technical professional, and then of course working in agriculture. We, we are in an agricultural area of the state. So again, there's lots of opportunities out there. It really just depends on what you as an individual student, what are you interested in and how do you want to take that major and apply it to a field? Next slide, please. So this illustration kind of shows you what those pathways look like. So a bachelor's degree is about four years. And then depending on what you want your next step to be, if you want to head into medical school or another health profession school, allied health or nursing, that's another two or two to four years. A master's degree in, a, in your area of interest could be about two years. Law or business school is another two to four years. Um, or if you want to go into um, a PhD program as a researcher or a professor, that's four plus years, again, depending on the program. Um, so as you can see, you can really go anywhere with any of our majors. Next slide, please. 
So here in the School of Natural Sciences, we do offer an array of programs to support students in, in your learning. So first up is academic advising, and I should probably introduce myself. My name is Erica Robbins, and I'm the Director of Student Services in the School of Natural Sciences. So I oversee the academic advising program, pre-health advising, the Excel program, and the STEM Center. And I'll talk about these programs here in just a bit. So NS Undergraduate Advising works with students through graduation to explore interests, abilities, and goals. Uh, we offer advice on course selection and satisfaction of degree requirements. And we assist students facing difficulties that affect their education. And so we're here to support you um, well beyond what's happening in the classroom, um, providing referrals to campus resources. If it's something that's affecting your academic life, we want to know about it. And we're here as an as a advocate for you. In pre-health advising, we work with all students in UC, at UC Merced, regardless of their major, who are interested in pursuing a career in healthcare. So if your ultimate goal is to go to medical school, pharmacy, vet, dental, physician assistant, um, nursing, whatever it may be, we're here to support you and help you reflect on those, on your interests and values, make sure that you're lined up to take that next step, no matter what it is. The Excel program works with students with many challenges faced in adjusting to the rigors of a math and science curriculum. Science majors are very rigorous and they are challenging. And the Excel program is there to provide an extra layer of support to help students succeed in their academics. And then finally, the STEM Center is the tutoring hub for STEM courses at UC Merced, but it's also a learning community to enhance academic and social experiences for undergraduates pursuing degrees in science, technology, engineering, and math. And their services do include peer tutoring, but they'll also help you find research opportunities, um, internship opportunities, and then building lifelong skills needed for advancement and leadership in STEM careers. Next slide, please. So we do off, we also offer living learning communities, and these are themed communities and they're housed within the School of Natural Sciences. So these are increased opportunities to build friendships and community increased enjoyment of collegiate life and opportunities to pursue joint interests, increased grades, hopefully, and a greater success holistically during your academic and during your college career. So they are academically focused and grouped around specific themes. And then you're living in the residence halls with the students that you're also taking a course with. So um, you do have one, at least one course that you would be taking with your, your residential suite mates, depending on which, which room or um, which setup you're in. Um, and this is an opportunity, again, if you've got an interest in a diverse uh, career track or you, an avid interest in sustainability, teaching, computer simulations, or healthcare, an SNS Living Learning Community is the place for you. And then we also have the CalTeach program, which offers two minors specifically geared to students who want to teach Hi, um, math and science, either the elementary or the high school level. Um, one of these minors, the natural sciences education with credential minor, um, actually allows students to complete their bachelor's degree in a science major, in a STEM major, and a teaching credential through UC, with UC Berkeley all simultaneously. Um, so it's an amazing program, um, and we would love to share more information with you if you have more questions. Uh, next slide, please. And then finally, there are on-campus resources for jobs and internships. So the Center for Career and Professional Advancement helps students identify on-campus employment opportunities, but also internships, whether they're on or off campus. They help with resumes, cover letters, interviewing skills. And we do have a designated STEM career specialist housed in the Center for Career and Professional Advancement that works exclusively with our students. And so he is happy to help you identify what that next career, what that career goal is or what that next step is. And if you're not sure what that next step might be, he's an excellent place to start and start exploring the possibilities of career options out there for you. Next slide. So I'm gonna turn it back to Ricky so we can do some Q&A. Thank you so much, Erica. And what a wonderful event we've had so far with all of our fantastic presenters and guest speakers. So at this time, if anyone else uh, that is on the panel, if you'd like to come back on screen with us, we are happy to have you here. And we will go ahead and dive into some of our question and answers. Let me go ahead and take a look and see what we have waiting for us here. All right, so the first question is, what major do you recommend for students who want to become a veterinarian? I can take this one. 
I recommend the major in which you are most passionate because you can plan for any health career with any major. Very good. All right. So the next question, does UC Merced offer a Bachelor of Science in Bioinformatics? We do not currently offer a bioinformatics major. However, we have a lot of coursework that uh, gives you skill sets and training. And actually some of these, some of the uh, courses span multiple departments that you can sample. Um, and we do have a bioinformatics class and some quantitative biology classes uh, right in our program that you can fulfill the major requirements with. Very good, thank you. Let's move on to our next question. And so someone's writing in, if they're not quite sure yet exactly which science they would like to go into, how easy is it to change majors at UC Merced? I would say that it depends, sorry. <laughs> I would say that it depends on how far along you are, right? If you, and especially if you pick a nice balanced first bit of your program, which our advisors help you do, especially knowing that you're not sure what your path is yet, then that can help sort of maximize the ease with which you go into another program. Um, once you figure out what you want to do. So even if you say like, oh, I really, I have a lot of students in chemistry that I advise who say, well, I started out this way, but it turned out I wanted to be a chemist, or it turned out I was really interested in sort of the overlap between biology and chemistry or chemistry and physics. And so there's a lot of personal attention. So, so we are able to help you like within the departments and then within student services really help you navigate how complicated that can seem from the outside. But there are pathways and we can help you find them. Wonderful. Which major at UC Merced would be best for a career in pathology? We have a lot of uh, related coursework in biology that you could do, especially our, our, um, our immunology track and our microbiology and cell biology. All of these courses, uh, all these tracks have requirements that fit within that, um, that concept. And we teach some really excellent classes in virology, microbiology, uh, sort of advanced topics related to those, immunology. And then uh, we also teach an evolutionary medicine class. Very good, thank you. Our next question is asking that if a person would like to pursue psychiatry, would it be better to major in chemistry or be biological sciences? I think this goes back to the other answer that you should pick which one you're most passionate about, right? I mean, there is so much biology and chemistry and psychiatry that either one you pick will be a great preparation as long as you care about it and find your your passion inside of it. Yes, okay, Eric is nodding, so she knows better than I do even. Dean <laughs> <laughs> Dumont, did you have a comment? Yeah, I do. Um, you know, one of the things that we do is we bring back alumni to talk to our students. We have a program called Experience by Degrees. So like all chemistry majors come back and talk about what they do and the physicists come back, the biologists and, and so on. And the fascinating thing about that is that they, the panelists in each one have a similar range of jobs, right? And so what that's saying is that the kinds of skills that you get in any STEM major are applicable so widely that um, it's probably, you know, you can relax a little about choosing a major, right? It's, you're going to get those skills, whatever you do. So that's just my observation. Very good. We'll move on to the next question. Thank you guys for those responses. So let's see the next one here. How easy is it to contact the professors individually? You can contact me now. I'm APJ at ucmerced.edu. You don't even have to be a student here to get in touch with me. Um, it's e we, we make ourselves accessible. Most of our labs have undergraduates doing research with us, right? I mean, it's there isn't a barrier to talking to professors more than we absolutely have to have sometimes. There's a, there are moments where we will be busy, but we are almost always ready to talk to our students from our classes or from outside of our classes because we're it's part of our mission, right? We're not, we are a research university, but that has university in the name, right? So we, we are interested in meeting you and you're a big part of what we love about our jobs. So I think it's pretty easy. Very good. So the next question we have here, what are the work study opportunities for an environmental systems science major? Um, a job opportunity. I can't remember if it was specifically work study 
but it was working with the uh, natural reserve system, which we have a site, um, the vernal pools. Um, and so there's, there's opportunities to work within the UC and it'll, it can be specific to your major. Um, and so that's just one recent example. Um, but I know that the sustainability, the Office of Sustainability also employs students um, to do a variety of jobs. It just really depends on what the need is at that time, but you can always check out the school, the student employment postings online to see what's available. Wonderful, thanks Erica. The next question is how many seats are there for biological sciences department classes and what is the minimum requirement to get into that department? So we don't really have a cap per se. So if you're interested, I encourage you to apply. We have um, a lot of students who join us. Uh, the general admission requirements are those of UC Merced uh, general admission and declaring that you're interested in biology and then you're welcome to come join us and start experiencing our, our program. Happy to have you. Great, thank you. The next question is, can I get into college without having picked a major? Yes, <laughs> uh, you can be undeclared um, and you can be undeclared within a, a school also. So come join the School of Natural Sciences and be undeclared with us. Um, like I, I sort of related to what I said before, you know, we're here to help you figure out your path a lot of the time. A lot of people who think they know their path change their minds anyway, so it's okay. Um, you're not supposed to know everything before you come to college because it's a learning experience. So you can absolutely apply without having a major picked out already. Wonderful, thank you. The next question has to do with research. Someone is asking, what is research and how do they get involved with that? Uh, re research is boundless. There's so many opportunities to do research here on campus and almost anything you can imagine, whether it's uh, chemical applications that we've heard from, uh, physics and development, uh, even some of our other schools have research and engineering and things like that. Uh, and then within biology, students are involved in all sorts of things from uh, some of the topics people have asked about from medical sciences and pathology, all the way to doing research out in the fields. I have students collecting insects with me around campus and other areas. Uh, students get their hands in, on everything we do. So any, any, basically any faculty program or research you learn about in a university, particularly our school, students are involved in. Uh, and I think the best way to get involved is to start, uh, well, pestering the faculty's cl the classes you're in. Go up and start to engage faculty directly and ask them and, and make a personal connection. And don't be afraid of them. Faculty are always really interested in talking about their research with students and uh, getting students involved. It's, it's one of the sort of um, uh, bright spots of doing all that work. I was going to add that we have lots of programs on campus. It, you know, beyond getting reaching out to your your professors, which is a great way to do it, talking to your TAs. If you're in a discussion section that's run by a TA, a lot of the time those are graduate students usually, and so they're in the process of doing research with faculty as well. They're a great resource also for learning about opportunities. But we have programs specifically designed to get undergraduates engaged in research on campus, and they will help you learn about what research is. What are these these questions, whether they're scientific or social or um, technological questions. What are they? How do you look into those? They help you figure out which skills you need to best present yourself and ask those questions. Um, and we have lots of programs with outside organizations like some of the institutes that were mentioned earlier, like working with NASA, national laboratories. Um, we have a, a, a program called the Bridge to Research Program um, that I help run that is about getting people early research experiences so that they're better prepared to do research uh, on campus and off campus later in life. So. Um, there are lots of ways to get involved with that, and it's one of the hallmarks of UC Merced. It's, it's one of the best reasons to come to UC Merced as a science major, because you're going to get opportunities to do research here. Yeah, I was just going to add, you might Google UROC, the Undergraduate Research Opportunity Center, which um, is sort of the central location for holding, you'll, get, you'll see the range of, of things that are possible, as well as a lot of summer opportunities. That's something that I didn't realize as a, as a high school student that it might be possible for me in a couple of years to work in a lab in the summer and get paid and get to know a professor who's going to recommend me for future positions. I mean, there's sort of a win-win-win in terms of exploring your interests. Yeah, I'll, I'll just add real quick, not, not to keep this going for too long, but um, 
I, I was a five-year undergraduate major and wasn't until my very last year I finally got involved in research and that just changed everything for me, changed my entire life's trajectory and here I am. Um, so it's never too late. Uh, it's definitely great to get involved early. Um, but if you, if, if you just take a class or something about that class that sparks interest, go ahead and ask that faculty. Fantastic information, never enough. So any other comments, feel free to jump in at any time and add to those. That's wonderful, thank you. So the next question has to do with the difference between an emphasis, a major, a minor, if one of you can touch on that. Well, uh, they're all related to the series of courses you need to take to complete your degree. Um, Majors are sort of these general categories that we talk about. An emphasis is a sort of a flavor of a major. So, you know, in chemistry, we have, you can get a chemistry degree, right? That's telling people, you say, oh, I'm a chemistry major. They know that you're studying chemistry as your main topic, um, but there are em different emphases. So they're sort of like tracks um, where you'll take a sort of um, enhancement classes that, that specifically prepare you to explore a certain area of chemistry. So we don't have very many emphases. So that's why I thought maybe I'd be a good person to answer this. We have chemistry, which is more general. And then there's materials chemistry, which gets you into doing a little bit more about how um, chemistry is used to make, analyze, or develop materials, things that make up the stuff that we use every day. Um, and then there's biological chemistry as an emphasis, which has you do these core classes, but then take some extra biology and make sure that you're really engaging with the interface between chemistry and biology. A minor is a way of sort of supplementing the major that you have. So you might take, um, it's, it's kind of like, um, a, a supplementary major that's smaller. So, you know, it's, it, it's not like doubling. A double major is where you actually follow both of those pathways for two different programs. And a minor um, is saying, I care about this. And I think I can add enough in here that I have like a narrative about this topic that I can convey. And there are specific path courses to do that. So um, some, you know, in chemistry, some of the minors that people like having are physics or biology, but mathematics is one. Computer science is another one that a lot of people will add on as a minor to show that they have um, computer skills in our modern world, right, where that's one of these job skills that people are interested in and in tagging on, but they know that what the, where their real passion is, is in chemistry or biology, physics, math, whatever it is. So um, they're all related, though, to how, what are the courses I need to complete during my time at UC Merced to get these degrees in my hand with my name on them. Very good. And now can we shift a bit from the actual academic courses and go into maybe more of the social or the clubs, the academic clubs that we offer for extracurricular? Can any of you share a little bit about that? I talk a lot, so you guys got to shut me down if that's necessary. <laughs> um, I teach chemistry 2H, which is like general chemistry, often one of the first chemistry classes that people take on campus, and it's often for science majors. Um, and a lot of my students are in our living learning communities. Um, which are a great way to sort of build these, these relationships. And from there, a lot of them join clubs that link them to other things. So there are clubs around sustainability, there are clubs around dancing, there are cultural clubs, there's cooking, um, art clubs, all different kinds of things. And a lot of those are how my students, when they first come in, especially this year after being remote for a lot of the end of high school, they're trying to rebuild in-person connections by working through some of these clubs and things like that. So that's been a bit, the living learning communities and clubs are where I see my students um, engaging a lot with their campus life and their community around them. Yeah, I, also know, oh, I was also going to note that we have a few clubs. Uh, one in particular I really enjoy is a ranger training uh, group that uh, students go up to Yosemite and they get all this experience from the local uh, national park and rangers. The, um, I don't know if there's a rangers affiliation, but the, the folks have all the managing natural lands. Um, so we can really get you out there and experiencing some of the ecology and evolution of the Central Valley. Um, there's a range of clubs around those kinds of acti active areas, not just national parks. And, um, very good. And I believe earlier in the presentation, physics, are, do we also have some physics clubs? Yeah, I, I mentioned, um, right, there's a Society of Physics students, there's a women in physics group, um, and then a, a new astronomy club. So those are all you can kind of guess their interests or the students that they, they sort of involve. But I, I guess maybe one thing I would say, as I mentioned, physics is a relatively small um, program, and those are three clubs within the department. And so not only there are clubs within the departments, but there are clubs of all sorts of things um, that span 
the university as a whole. So, um, you know, that's that's one of the great things to find, find these opportunities and explore them. Wonderful, thank you so much. So the next question goes into counseling and advising. So can someone explain how that works? Maybe Erica, this might be a good question for you. How do students go about getting the appointments and what is that experience like? Do they walk in and you're able to just kind of give them the answers? This is where you should go based on your interest. What is that experience like? Sure, that's a great question. Um, so academic advisors across the campus are available to students um, through a variety of means. So. Uh, we really try to make ourselves available in a variety of ways. So uh, we do offer walk-ins um, during certain days of the week at certain times um, and appointments are available as well. And we do offer both walk-ins and appointments either in person or virtual. So the days and times can vary depending on our schedules, um, but we really have had the opportunity to expand kind of how we meet with students. And so if you're more comfortable signing in on your phone and talking with an advisor, we are available that way as well. Um, so we generally don't just give answers. We do like to get to know students. Uh, you know, and you might have one particular question that's brought you into the office, of uh, whether the virtual office or the real office. Um, and we want to we want to explore like what's going on. Um, if you're asking about maybe dropping a class, tell us what's going on in that class. Have we exhausted all options? Um, is there something outside of school that's impacting your performance in that class? Can we address those issues? Because um, ultimately, it's all about student success. What can we do to help you succeed? And in some cases, yes, it might be withdrawing from a class or changing a major or adding this other minor that's really exciting to you. And so it's not just kind of input output. It's very much a relationship. Um, and so we really want to get to know students. Um, tell us, you know, what are your goals? How can we assist you? Um, what questions do you have and how can we best support you? Thank you so much, Erica. That's great information. So the next question has to do again a little bit with research. Someone's asking if we collaborate with any industry for research or particular area of research and as a follow up, uh, how do we make good use of the close proximity to the Silicon Valley? Well, I know in chemistry, we have some industry partnerships, um, particularly around making technology for screens and things like that. Um, there are also, I work with people that work um, in Australia on developing new alloys. Um, and so some of those are um, funded, the experimental part of that is funded through industrial partners. But there are people that work with companies. Lots of our students do internships um, during the summertime at companies in the Bay. Um, and I know that there is a lot of interest from on my side of things like pharmaceutical companies and things like that at recruiting specifically UC Merced students because our students are well trained in both the technical skills and in how to work in teams made up of people from all different walks of life, which is really, really valuable in Silicon Valley. We all know that that's a huge a huge effort being put forth in Silicon Valley right now and in tech companies. And so our students come with this nice broad education, this UC education. Um, and practical training and skills. So I know that there are a lot of um, there are a lot of industrial partners who are interested in recruiting. And one way to do that is through um, internships that people um, help connect students to. I don't know. Maybe the other others know more about other partnerships. Yeah, in, in physics, I'll just add. I mean, it's it's somewhat anecdotal, but I'm, there's um there's a lot of work being done by members of the department regarding the solar industry just based on interest in and in location um, in addition the department itself has an advisory board that includes a few members from industry and so that um, goes to to the mention of keeping connections with industrial partners as well yeah and i'll just add that um there's also a number of industry opportunities and relations with the biology program. A lot of our students go on to do internships or get jobs in biotech and things like Genentech and what have you. Um, but we also have a lot of uh, funded research and activities for training and, and research involvements with things like the National Institute of Health, um, which is very commonly known these days as one of the leading agencies for how we're guiding our way through um, COVID. Uh, we also have uh, uh, course opportunities and industry opportunities related to Howard Hughes Medical Institute. Um, and then we also have a lot of strong partnerships, not just in the biology program, but the um, ESS program, the environmental system sciences with agriculture, because that's a big component of the Central Valley. 
Uh, and there's a lot of opportunity for developing smart technology, sustainable agriculture, and also the sort of socioeconomic aspects of agriculture here in the Central Valley. And UC Merced's well placed for some of those uh, activities and involvement. Wonderful, thank you. The next question has to do with pre-med. So someone is asking, is pre-med actually a major all in and of itself? And what exactly is pre-med? So Erica can also help with this. She helps advise our pre-med students uh, and talks to them a lot about some of the challenges and things that she does. And she's wonderful at that. Um, pre-med is, we don't necessarily have a pre-med major or track. Our human biology track can include, a number of our tracks include the foundational, uh, at least in the biology, but again, you could, you could achieve this in other, other majors. Um, provide some of the foundational requirements that med schools look for. And I'll note that there is a pre-med club on campus, and that's a group of students that you can interact with to sort of sort out what it's like to go through that process and, you know, what, what are the best things that you should be doing and preparing and the types of classes you should take. Um, so, no, we don't have specifically a track for it, but our programs train you and with some, uh, particularly with some of our tracks, with a specific eye towards that outcome. Erica, do you have anything that you'd like to add? We did have a follow-up question I can toss out there at the same time. What major do you recommend for a student who wants to go into medical school? Sure, so I think Dr. Bennett hit all the nails on the head. So, um, and like I shared earlier, you can really pick any major and prepare for medical school. So um, I've worked with students. It's true that most will be in biology because of the amount of overlap between the requirements and the major requirements or the pre-med requirements and the major requirements. But I've worked with chemistry students. I've worked with bioengineering. I've worked with psychology, public health, sociology, anthropology, management and business economics. It really can, you can choose anything. And again, your academic advisors are there to support you in planning for the major. And then we're there as pre-health advisors to help layer in those science classes so you can finish all of your requirements at the same time. So really, we want you to choose something that you're passionate and excited about. That's most important. Very good. So another question, what major would any of you recommend for a student who's passionate about animals and biology? Biology, biology, there you go. We have a lot of animal classes. I, uh, we are developing some wildlife biology classes. I just brought on an insect class that I teach personally. Um, we have all sorts of cool classes that, I don't know exactly what, what kinds of animals you're interested in, but we cover most of them, including the marine kinds. Very fun. All right, so another question has to do with STEM classes. So this person is asking, are the STEM classes very hands-on or is it more lecture-based? I would say that almost all of our classes have some component that's hands-on, but it might be that in a lecture class, you're doing something hands-on to learn the material. So um, I think there are a lot of, there, there's often a balance between those different things. So the class I mentioned before, general chemistry, um, something that's taken by a lot of different STEM majors. Um, you work at, you have lecture sections where maybe I'm at the board writing some stuff down, but then you're at the board and you're solving a problem at the board with me or trying to help your classmates walk through the material together. Um, we might be building crystal structures with Play-Doh in class and that's lecture, but that's still very hands-on. Then there's discussion, which is a place where you get to work together on, on the material, review things, that sort of thing. And that can be more of working in small groups or there are lots of different ways that lecture and discussion can go. Then there's the lab component for that class where you really are in the laboratory doing ex like deep experiential learning, right? Like, oh, how do I carry this thing safely? Uh, how much, oh, that's a strong acid. What's the safety stuff for that? Oh, what if I mix these together, it changes color. Why does that happen, right? So those are, um, Though, though all of those are different components of that class, and you might think, oh, lecture is going to be the part where I'm sitting and I'm writing notes, there are a lot of hands-on aspects that a lot of our professors bring into all different parts of these courses, whether it's lecture, discussion, um, or, or laboratory work. Yeah, and, and I'll add to that, uh, most of our foundational curriculum have lab components attached to them. They're required, and they'll take you through all of some of the basic training and laboratory approaches that get used in those fields. And because a lot of our programs require students to take classes in all of our sister departments, so you'll take chemistry, biology, physics, you'll have exposure to all these things and you can sort of sample them and, and figure out whether or not you like them. Uh, we are also, particularly in the biology program, developing um, 
foundational classes that have real, real full on exper uh, experimental research components. Uh, in particular, we have a, vi a, a virus discovery class where undergraduates take it for a year and they're uh, particularly lower division undergraduates such as freshmen take it for a year and they go out and they isolate viruses and then they sequence their genomes to figure out what they are and what they do. Um, so we're actively developing curriculum like that to make more opportunities. Very good, thank you so much. So I will go ahead and toss out one more question. And then after this, I'd like to offer each of you an opportunity to give kind of your last words of advice, any tips and tricks to all of our listeners tonight. So I'll give you a second to think about that while we go ahead and toss out this last question. What is discussion? So I know we've heard about lecture labs. What is a discussion? I think I'm the one that used that, so I'll talk about it. Um, Discussion can take a bunch of different forms. A lot of the time it is designed to be a component for a class where you might need a little extra time, not just on your own or working with groups of students, but also with another facilitator. That could be a professor or a graduate student. And so it's a weekly time for you to meet and get more engagement with the material for that course. Um, that could take lots of forms, right? Maybe that is more lecture. Somebody saying, oh yeah, the professors put it up this way, but I like to think of it this way. And they show you a different way to go work through the problem. Or maybe it's working in groups together or doing solo work or having some other way of engaging, doing simulations. There are lots of different ways that you can do discussion, but it's sort of like, um, uh, sometimes people have quizzes or other things in those discussions as well. So it's just another component of how a class can be set up. Not all classes have them, um, but a lot of our base, uh, like our basic sciences classes have them because it's a really good way to get more time with your hands, brains, and hearts in the material. Um, and that, that's really helpful for learning. The more you engage with it um, throughout the week, the, the easier it is for you to learn how you learn best. Great explanation. Thank you for that. And all right, we actually did get one more question. So I'll give you another second here. So let's see, this person's asking what types of resources do they have or do we have available for academic help? So study groups, uh, academic tutoring, things of that nature. Yeah, so the STEM Center, uh, actually Erica over it works there and in, in oversees that. So Erica, why don't you tell us about the STEM Center? It's pretty exciting. It's a new new collaboration with the, um, under, the Dean of Undergraduate Education. Yes. So the STEM Center is now the home of the STEM Tutoring Hub. So that will be your one-stop shop for all STEM tutoring. Um, so it's very exciting. And um, they're getting some very nice new spaces that's going to be really conducive to group tutoring. Um, so that's available now and it's going to it's it's new for this semester and it's going to be expanded and built upon so by the time new students come on board um, in fall of 2022 uh, there's going to be a lot more um, opportunities and so that's going to be peer tutoring um, some graduate students will shuffle through there as well and provide assistance um, but then forming study groups that's something that you can do independently on your own uh, like nudge the person sitting next to you, especially for first year students, you're likely going to be seeing a lot of the same people in your classes. Um, you're going to all be taking a similar grouping of courses as first year STEM or science majors. So you're going to start to see the same people, start making friends, start making those connections. Another great place to make those connections is in our living learning communities. So when you do that housing application, check that you're interested. Um, check out the themes that we offer because that's another kind of plug and play opportunity to have some additional academic help. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Erica. So as I promoted just a moment ago, this is the time to shine for everyone here. I'd like to start with Dean Dumont. If you can offer any last minute words of advice to our audience, and then we'll just kind of go around and popcorn and we will see what advice you all have to share before we wrap up. Super, thank you. Um, I think it, it's so fun to listen to faculty and, and, and advisors talk about uh, about the university and what they do and what they, in, in their labs and in teaching. Honestly, I've heard the word follow your path, I've heard follow your passion over and over again tonight. And that is exactly what you do. Um, it's okay if you don't know what you're gonna do for your major, we will figure that out and you're gonna be fine. And it really is gonna be good no matter what you choose. So don't worry too much. 
Um, yeah, it's I, it's hard to beat follow your passion. I mean, I, you know, it's funny at these sorts of events, I get all excited. I want to go back and be a student because there's so many things to do. And it reminds me of back in the day. I, I mentioned I, I started uh, college as one major and I ended up switching into physics. And, and that very much was a chance to explore, you know, unlike high school, you really have the opportunity to kind of explore what you want to do and then really hone in on something that you find exciting. And so, uh, you know, I, I think I'm just repeating what Dean Newmont said, but I, it's hard to, it's hard to beat that. Uh, you know, I was thinking it's the same exact thing and um, I'll invite the chemistry person to plug their ears for a second. So I, I, I was a, a first generation undergraduate. I started pre-med because I just figured that was what I should do. And, you know, I stumbled around for a long time just trying to figure out exactly what my passion was. And I have to say that that was a really transformative and excellent experience for me because I got to just explore a lot of stuff. And of course I was trying to dodge a second semester of organic chemistry because I just didn't have the passion or the heart to take it. And pre-med wasn't enough for me to take some of these classes. and. Eventually I found uh, some things that I was really excited about and actually it took me some time to do that. Actually, it took me five years. Uh, it cost me some money. I don't necessarily advise on that, but don't be afraid to take your time and to explore and to have some, some failures along the way and to recalibrate and to go in different directions. Um, you got to, undergrad is a long period of time and you're gonna have a lot of experiences and uh, you got to make sure your heart is in what you're doing. Of course, it's challenging and there's hard things to do and you'll you'll get through them. Um, but as long as you start finding that passion, um, it becomes a lot of fun. So besides the follow your passion and you know, select the major you're most passionate about, because I conclude all of my workshops with that same phrase, um, I'm going to also add, don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, I, I can't tell you how many times a student has sat down in my office and I, I'm so sorry to bother you, but I have these questions like, no, 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 I love it. Come with questions, write them down so that you, we know that we're going to answer all of your questions and you're going to go away with a decision made or the information you need to go and think about the decision or whatever it is. Um, don't be shy about asking questions. Uh, there's tons of people at UC Merced that are available to help you, whether it's faculty or staff or even other students. Don't, don't be shy, we're all here to support your success. And then I'll pass it back to Aurora. Thanks. Um, follow your passion is so great. It can be really intimidating to hear that if you feel like either you're passionate about everything, I'm pathologically enthusiastic and that is difficult sometimes when you're just like, everything is amazing, what do I do? Um, or if you feel like you really haven't found it yet, right? You've been bouncing around different topics, you haven't found that, it's okay. and at UC Merced, the School of Natural Sciences can be your home, right? There, the, the whole point of the natural sciences is exploration and analysis. And that's exactly what you can do um, as you go through sort of the process that Gordon was describing. Top secret information. I'm not especially passionate about organic chemistry either. I'm a physical chemist. So you may find even within the thing that you love, and I actually do love organic chemistry, but it was a real challenge for me too. So even within the path that ends up being the right one for you, you really may hit some huge challenges. But UC Merced is an excellent academic home. It's an excellent academic family. The students, the faculty, the staff, um, I, I've never been on an, on an academic campus that so very much wanted to support one another. And I think that's a really excellent place to work hard, answer hard problems and do magnificent things. Um, so I hope that I hope that each of you will come and do this with us, right? I think the School of Natural Sciences is a great home, whether you know exactly what you're going to do um, for the next 40 years of your life and you have it all written down in your special journal or, um, you know, you, you really are not even sure you want to go to college yet. Um, we can help you talk about all of that and figure out what's best for you. And most of us are somewhere in between, even as grown up professors and maybe even deans. I don't know. I can't speak to that, but I bet there are moments. <laughs> so um, please come come join us. It's, it's a really wonderful place to be a scientist. 
I do not know how to follow that up to wrap everything up other than to say, find your passion, follow your passion. I know that's a big takeaway from all of you tonight for myself included. So thank you so much to everyone that's been on our great panel tonight, Dean Dumont, everyone else that's been here sharing your personal stories. I actually think we could do a full hour webinar just on all of our personal journeys and how we ended up where we are here on this webinar talking to this great audience of incoming and potential students. So thank you all so much for sharing that. As a quick reminder to all of our attendees, this event tonight has been spotlighting the School of Natural Sciences, and it is one of many different events that we are offering that are called Discover UC Merced. It's a virtual series. We will drop the link in the chat for you so you can take a look at the website and get yourself registered for some upcoming events through the month of November. And as another quick reminder, the month of November from the 1st through the deadline of the 30th, that is your deadline to submit your admission application. So in order to help you with that, during Discover UC Merced, we have a jam-packed schedule for you uh, to help you along the way of your admission application. Some of those sessions do include things such as the PIQ section, which is the personal insight question. So if you've heard the PIQ, that's what that's about. And we will have experts on with you then to help you basically put your best foot forward. Some others also include the about you section, the majors, the minors, all of the different areas of that application. So definitely take a look at that link and get yourself signed up for one of those upcoming events. And if you'd like to make a note, that website is admissions.ucmerced.edu and just go to the top of that screen and click on the events link that is there. Once again, thank you so much to everyone who has participated tonight, all the great questions and answers. And on behalf of all of my great colleagues who have been on with us tonight and everyone on campus, thank you so much for joining us. Have a great evening.